I said no, man, listen no, to no, me. man, you said that. Because if I see you slap Sally, Shaquanda, Felicia, you're going to hear not just a bat, it's going to be a bat, bat. <laughs> and I had to tell Charleston. Yeah. At times, I was like, it took him to say, man, f Cam Newton. I thought he was about to. You I see what I'm saying? Yo, 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 what are you doing? I'm giving you unbelievable content for the masses. And you just gonna keep it to yourself? Do me a favor, tap that red button right there, subscribe, and it literally takes no time. Try it and see what happens. Yo, what's good, what's poppin'? What it is, what it ain't, what it could be, what it should be, what it really would be. Ah, feel like back at home, you know what I'm saying, the trumpets are. Uh, Dun, 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 dun. Back here on the set of Funky Friday, huh, in a major way. And I promise to give good content for the masses, but I promise, most of all, I do promise to keep it funky for your asses. Now, this episode is not like any other episode because this episode is the season finale, as well as we're going to take a look back at some of the top moments in this past year of 2023. Now, before we go ahead and get started, there were some major milestones at Iconic Saga that we've kind of conquered. Uh, on set, you see uh, one of our producers, Amari Collins, uh, as well as Miss Plackey. Uh, she's shy, she don't really like talking a lot, uh, she thick. She fine, <laughs> she's sexy, <laughs> she's a dying. Yeah, um, I call her Miss Milio. <laughs> you know, she'll whisper in my ear now and then, but uh, yeah, that, that is just something that is my um, token of really acknowledgement, but it's an appreciation to, to the people. Thank you for tuning in, thank you for your views, thank you for your comments, and most of all, thank you for your subscriptions. And as we keep turning this, this train into producing great content that pushes the needle forward, one of the main things that I wanna always stand for is not violence, um, not prejudiceness, not racism, not sexism. I just wanna stand on the fact that I want people to live in their truth. Um, and at the very end, we're able, no matter who and what the guest is, we're able to agree to disagree, to bring the viewer yourself into the, the world of, you know, the talent to allow them to teach you or allow them to bring you into their lives. And as we go on with this episode, I'm gonna bring you, or take a step back and bring you back into the lives of some of the moments that we thought were extremely impactful uh, on the Funky Friday platform. Amari. What's going on? What's up, bro? What's up, brother? <sighs> now, What's up? first off, yeah. How long have you been a part of uh, Iconic Saga? Since 2017, been on the phone with you, bro. Mm. Yeah. To be behind the scenes, editing, producing, sometimes directing, uh, and giving your, your vision, um, how has this opportunity with being you know, head of digital at Iconic Saga, how has that really sparked your creative freedom um, you know, for you? And it's been great um, just seeing the, the team grow with the start of, you know, David and then it's starting to grow to the team we have now with so many people. And even, you know, with the start of Funky Friday, you mm -hmm. know, this started in the back of the car yeah, yeah, in yeah, New yeah. England, bro, like crashed down in the seat, shooting, coming and going. Yeah. So to see where we are now 
It's like, bro, we on a set, bro. Like, yeah. we was on four wheels. Now we in chairs on a set, bro. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. It's just been dope to just see the maturation and the growth and the process, bro. And so I'm super proud of our team, super proud of yeah. you and just where we about to go. So just to bring it to crazy. perspective, it's like when we first started Funky Friday, right? I was in Boston, not in the best mental state because yeah. everything was just about football, 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 football. And my outlet, I didn't have my children around, which was was draining me. Uh, I didn't have really no family around outside of my assistant um, uh, at the time. And just learning more and more about this space where you could just speak your mind, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yo, what's good? What's poppin'? It's Friday and uh, I'm fresh as usual. Just thought I should tell you that. Yo, it's good. What's poppin'? I've been in training camp, so I think I've been pretty busy. But this particular day, I got off. So when I got off days, I'm able to keep it funky. I just wanna start a open conversation since I'm in the car, as I find myself always being. And we are gonna call this Keep it funky. Funky Fridays. How about that? Because I'm going to keep it funky with you. So let's be funky. But this one is... That's why I really originally created, you know, Funky Friday as a, as a way or a segue to be able to say, bro, like, y'all know me as a football player, but I'm like, I want to talk about what I want to talk about. Okay. Like, Omari was a person behind the scenes in the car that was like crouched down like he was trying to get this shot he was taping up gopros and it's just to see where we're at now yeah and to see the level of impact now yeah i mean it's 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 wowing to to see and just for inspiration for anybody who's doing content or doing podcast Create content not for the viewer. Create content for you. Yeah, that's true. Do you know what I'm saying? Because if you could create content for you, the validation of, of appreciation will be double-fold because you're authentically you. You're creating something that you like first. And then when people start to attach themselves to it while looking forward to the episodes, looking forward yeah. to what you have to say, that's something that is like, yo, like, damn. Yeah. That makes it even better, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I, I take direction from everybody on the team. It's not just like, no, shut the fuck up. Y'all do what the hell I tell y'all <laughs> to do. Like, that ain't, that ain't how I lead. You, yeah. I never led like that in the locker room or whatever. It's just like, bro, I'm going to speak my mind and I'm going to hold you accountable. And there's times where, you know, you know, I always tease Omar, you're like, bro, no, man, no, Cam. You can't do that, bro. Yeah, that ain't going to look good. That ain't a good look. And I was like, shit, motherfucker, like, what are we supposed to be doing there? You know yeah. what I'm saying? And over these last, really, two months, there have been times where Amari has been, like, an extended family member because a lot of people in my family are, like, conservative. They're, like, reserved. Like, yeah. No, don't talk about that. Don't you do got that. to it, Cam. You got to push that panic button with his ass because he going <laughs> to jump. I'm like, Cam, no. Fuck it. Let's get I'm out of here. Shit. Yeah, like, Motherfucker, you better jump too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thanks. Shit. But even like with that, going to church, you know what I'm saying? And I know I gotta work on my tongue. I gotta work on my delivery. Delivery? <laughs> no, we're we gonna get into that too. We gotta get into that. But it's it's me just expressing myself. And I and I always I've I've been saying this for, for some time now. Like we are in a golden age. Of, of content being generated by authentic people. That's true. Gone are the days where you just have to wear the suit and tie and you just have, you know, dun, 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 dun. hey, on this week's episode of Funky Friday. Like, that ain't how people receive information now. And in essence, it's coming down to the viewer or going up to the viewer to be like, yo, bro, like, I know you ain't really registering what people saying, you know what I'm saying? By how they speaking it, you know, I can be able to paint a picture in your head to make you understand how I feel. And whether it's a word that's thrown out there or another word that's thrown out there, it's opinionated to how the delivery should be, but I just want you to feel how I feel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So as we kind of get into this episode, man, it's going to be really 
uh, lax. Um, but man, what a year! Yeah, I mean, like we're we're sitting in around the summertime at like seven hundred, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, seven hundred thousand subscribers, and yeah. then all of a sudden, boom, like take wildfire. Off. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll take you behind the scenes. Uh, we're gonna bring you on the scenes, um, and just keep it, keep it funky. Throw it funky, out of the funky, bro. I'm already rock and roll, dog. So since you're talking about delivery, mm -hmm. delivery, man, we got first up, we got Charleston White and this whole delivery piece, man. Let's look into it. See this, see this is the thing, Charleston. Like I, I think. Everything that you're saying has some truth to it. It's just the, the delivery. You're oh. standing, there's no denying that you're standing for and by your people. Well, here's the thing. Uh, when you're addressing evil, you can't worry about the delivery. When you're looking at the conditions of our community, you can't worry about the evil when you got kids that kill kids and say, we smoking on Tuca. See, they wasn't worried about the delivery when these kids in Chicago were talking about smoking on Tuca. Mm -hmm. They wasn't worried about the delivery. I ain't got no manners for no slut. I'm going to put my thumb in her butt. The delivery? I like girls kissing girls where I'm from. And that's on the radio. Girls on girls. That's, they, that's promoting lesbianism to my daughter as we driving to school. This song they playing with Drake. Y'all worried about the delivery? That nigga thug said, nigga, I shot at your mama. You don't mention me no more. He really shot that nigga mama. And y'all worried about my delivery? These niggas are confessing to murders on songs. And y'all worried about my delivery? The conditions of black sucking them, talking about booty hole? Y'all worried about my delivery? Come on, don't be hypocrites, black people. Mm. Y'all can't listen to this music if y'all so caught up in my delivery. Don't do me like that. And the way y'all snap and pop y'all pussy to this music, the way y'all kill and drill to this music, don't trip about my delivery. Easy. Why you talk like that? I talk like that to get my point across. Because when I wasn't talking like that, wearing a bow tie, y'all wasn't paying me no attention. And I was going to the Supreme Court changing laws and legislations in this country. I was working with over 50 U.S. congressional members from Ted Cruz to Mark Rubio, Senator John Cornyn. I was on the front page of the American Bar Association Journal. Y'all wasn't paying attention then. So, nigga, I gave y'all what y'all want. A ignorant motherfucking nigga that talk like them rappers. Now y'all listening. Now let me tell y'all what y'all need to hear. We fucked up as a race of people since y'all so caught up into my delivery. 5% of children now are catching HIV from ages 13 to 21. What y'all worried about? 85% of the new chlamydia, all the new cases of teenagers. What y'all so caught up about? Nigga, only 35% of most kids in inner cities can read on or above their grade level. What the fuck are y'all talking about and these kids can't read? Come on, my nigga. So we gonna be real, let's be real. Mm. Are we still mad about George Floyd? Are we still mad about police shooting? Is that why we not kneeling no more? Are we still boycotting the NFL? What happened to all these things? What happened? Nigga, because I'm still stuck on Tamir Rice while y'all stuck on my delivery. I'm still mad why ain't now a motherfucker tore up the country behind Tamir Rice. Baby Tamir Rice at that. Since we so in tune. So a lot of people had a lot to say about that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, that's golly. Like, I'm listening to it again, yeah. and I done seen, you know, the clips kind of circulate. Correct. But going into that interview, one of the things that it was undoubted mm -hmm. that it was going to do numbers. Yeah. I mean... Being in the in the in the room, feeling the the the, the tension that was coming from his seat, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and, and and his and his voice inflection and and things like that. Like I was reading some of the comments, and it was like, yeah, he was stomping Cam. I was like, no, I think as I get better and learn my craft, I must allow the interviewer to have his place of, of reasoning. Yeah. He has to make his point. Gotta let him speak. I didn't necessarily want him to feel like I was stepping on his time. Mm -hmm. And 
I was wild and still blown away by the fact that he was able to articulate himself in a way that not only was, you know, easy to kind of pick up what he was saying, it was digestible to the degree where it's like, damn, like the person who was initially saying like, man, Charleston White is a clown. Yeah. But no, he then flipped it and put that mirror in front of your face and said, no, motherfucker, you a clown for being able to recite these words, mm -hmm. but not recite a book. That's true. That's but true. also standing in, in your community where there is a there is a way or there is a theory that we all can change the world. Mm -hmm by starting in our community. I see oftentimes, let's say a, 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 a simple gesture as picking up trash. Like I see people throwing trash on, in the hood or throwing trash on the ground and it's like, yo bro, like just pick it up, throw it in the, in the litter box. Yeah. But what Charleston White was able to expose was the insufficiencies of people's mentality, especially in our culture. In our culture. Yeah. You know, and this is not a black thing, Versus a black thing. This is a, a, a people thing. Yeah. Because I always stood on the premise to the degree where, bro, be honest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you are able to see your world and, 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 and poke out some of the things, that's just accountability. And if anything, that, that interview taught me that he was trying to hold people accountable. Yeah. They got, they got so caught up into it like, man, fuck Deion said. Okay, cool. And as a matter of fact, I spoke to Deion Sanders yeah. afterwards. And what was that conversation like? I, you know what? When he when he reached out to me, I was expecting to to. I was expecting a person that's just gonna be like, bro, why you let him talk about me like that? Yeah. It was the polar opposite. Mm. He was like, man, I appreciate how you carried yourself, because in 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 any situation. In, a, in an interview or in any uh, interaction with something, it's authentic to have real emotions. There was times, and I had to tell Charleston, yeah. post, the, post the, uh, the interview dropping. It was like, bro, I was, at times I was like, it took him to say, man, fuck Cam Newton. I thought he was about to. You I, see what I'm saying? I thought he was about to say, because when he kept saying, fuck Dion, I thought he was about to say, fuck you too. Yeah, like real I shit. I was behind my camera like, I don't know who about to hold your big ass back. No, but oh, but that's, that's one of the things, because I was going to be guilty of the delivery, yeah. taking, taking heed to the words. And I think one of the main things that he said that kind of flew over a lot of people's head is actions mm -hmm. speak louder than words. Yeah. But y'all are taking on my words and not taking on my, my actions. actions. Yeah. Because while he was in Atlanta, by the way, might I add, he gave away turkeys. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, <clears throat> not only if, is he causing like a, a, a shake in the environment, like, yo, he's still giving back. He's doing something with it, yeah. But what are you doing? Yeah. Besides tweeting or, or leaving a comment on the page to say, like, man, if I see him, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. It's like, nah, bro. Like, get behind something or be the trailblazer of something positive. Yeah. So let's not get caught into all the, the, the verbal, which we got to do better at. Now, I'm not, I'm not giving him no pass for that. Because he talk wild. It's a wild guy. Cowboy. You know what I mean? But the truth is, it's commendable for him to stand on something and also have the backing of, of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Speaking about politicians, speaking about this person, speaking about rap music, speaking mm -hmm. about when he was doing this, speaking about this and that, and you know, knowing people's names by by name, first name, last name yeah. basis, judges and 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 counsel women and men and things like that. I was like, yo, shit, let me <laughs> damn. That's what I was more you know, amazed at. And you took that away from the interview though. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think more than anything else, I felt more uh, liberated afterwards to be like, bro, I got to, I got to start standing on my shit more. You because you were saying? saying that after the interview, you was like, he made me like want to do for, for my people. And that's not people that's just black people. My kind. My kind. my kind, that's what you said. Yeah. People that think yeah. like me, that believe like me, yeah. Yeah, I said like, since that, 
the real emotion for me was I got to do better for my kind. Yeah. My kind is not just racial or ethnicity yeah. or, or things like that. If you feel like me, if you think like me, if you if you are moved by some of the things that I that I say, I'm that you're my kind. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like I I, I try to look past certain base layer things and 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 do as the God I serve. He looks at hearts, and over time you're gonna, you know, how do you judge a tree? Right? The Bible says you judge a tree by the fruit it bears. So you judge a human by the actions that it kind of goes about. Mm. So for me, I'm looking at actions. It's like if I call you my partner, if I call you my friend, if I call you my, you know, my peer, I'm looking at you. There's going to be certain times that your actions is going to be like, damn, bro, you don't want to, you ain't trying to get better. Yeah. How you fucking trying to get better? But shit, we up at six. We working out today. You ain't that. No, bro, ain't not today. Not a good one, bro. No. <clears throat> I'm still in at 10 a.m. <clears throat> I'm. No. Yeah. Hell no. Cool, man. We're going to get to the next one, man. Next. Hold on. Go back. Go back. Go back. Oh. Let's stay right here. Let me Let's see right where So, just real quick, the tweets, some of the tweets, it, it was crazy. It mm -hmm. spread like wildfire. Um, so, Mac Roberts, Mac underscore Roberts tweeted, now that. The real Charleston, now that is the real Charleston White. For everyone that keeps saying, nah, I don't fuck with Charleston, you hear what he be saying. He just told y'all exactly why he says what he says and it delivers how it delivers. Professor said, my nigga Charleston was spitting. Mm -hmm. That fire, that gas. Cam ain't even have nothing to say because he knew Buddy was speaking facts. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Do you think you got, like, because people are like, oh, he, he shut Cam up. Like, is it quote unquote being stumped? Did he stump no, you in that? No, like, no, no. See, this is this is the challenge that I have for every person who I sit across from. Uh huh. Use my platform to empower people. Okay. To impact people, to move people. Charleston maximized that. He did. You know, I've seen his interviews on multiple different things. Did they do numbers? Yeah, but they didn't do numbers like, like this. this. Because what he was saying, it was undeniable to, to the degree, like he, he talking about something now. Yeah. And as an interviewer, I'm sitting up, it's my role to just sit back. Yeah. And I got, was just sitting back and letting them, you know, have at it because he not only was talking to me, he was talking to you, 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 yeah. you. And even talking to him too. Yeah. Because there was times where he had to question and he was like, I think the thing that I love most about it, he called me afterwards and he said, Bro, ain't nobody ever had me that vulnerable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I and that's that's one of the things that I cherish most sitting in my position because I want people to be comfortable. Yeah. The great ones have always done that. Yeah. The Oprah Winfrey's, the Arsenio Halls the David Letterman's, these people have allowed the person that they're talking to to feel comfortable to speak on anything that is bothering them or on their heart. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And as I get better in this media space, I've learned that. It's not for me to say, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Because once you say that, his mental just stops. Yeah, the, the guard goes up. It, you know what I'm saying? And I was just allow him to Get it out in, in that way. So, you know, as we move forward from this Charleston, you know, situation, man, it, obviously, if you haven't paid attention to or had an opportunity to watch that piece, I was blown away that people people paid attention for three hours. Yeah. Like, I was looking like, this shit deserve an Emmy. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like, an Oscar. Charleston coming up. He got, he got some more parts. You feel me? So, but I was, I was very, very excited or very pleased about the performances of that. All right, so Ken, next up, we got Mexican, Mexican OT, mm -hmm. um, the Waffle House uh, conversation. Let's see what we're talking about. Bro, you ever yeah. been to Waffle Bus in Houston? They got these, this dessert, and it's a waffle, and it's, you know, it's, it's fucking folded like a sandwich, mm -hmm. and they got, like, this Irish cream in there and mm -hmm. bananas and strawberries. Bro, I fucking make myself sick off that shit. You ever been to Waffle House? Yeah, but it's not for me. For real? I think so. You know what my problem is with Texas? Damn. Well, it's really two things that I don't like about Texas. The heat? Nah. You can do with that? Okay, what's up? Bro, they don't got Waffle Houses in Texas. Yeah, we do. Not like, not in Houston? Yes, we do. Bro, y'all got more Denny's 
than Waffle Houses, and that's a fucking crime. But two, three, four o'clock in the morning, you can get some hibachi. I want Waffle House. <laughs> Bruh. First off, man, shout out to the editors, bro. The VJs, the Breelands, the Kents, the Brendans. Like, bro, like, man, I got a great team, man. Like, I be looking at some of the stuff, and I really be laughing at the shit, because, <laughs> like, that's one of the main things that, like, I, going back to my point, like, I create content for myself. Yeah. And if I like it, then, of course, I know other people is going to like it, too. Yeah. And it's so crazy because Waffle House tweeted, the, the fact that y'all got Waffle House's attention, thankfully, we have 125 restaurants in Texas. 36 of those are in Houston area. Mexican, Mexican OT. Waffle House is basically just the Southern hibachi. So give us another chance soon. Bro, that's a reach right there, bro. Waffle House done tweeted back at the episode, bro. Yeah, so check this out. I, they reached out to me, too, on my Instagram. Uh -huh. And you know, me being the businessman that I am, I'm like, shit, I know I done spent the check on Waffle House multiple times Thanks. in my life, you feel me? So I was like, shit. I look up to guys like Magic Johnson, Shaq, you know, guys in that, in that arena who have a high sense of business acumen, even though that they once were an athlete, right? Yeah. So shit, I hit them back and was like, yo, is there any way that I can get it involved in the franchise <laughs> scene? <laughs> ah! oh. And then they, it, it took like a, a data re reply or whatever at some time. And it was like, unfortunately, we're a private company now. Like, we stopped uh, doing franchises, but shit. I'd have been giving Waffle House some, some good, you know, Fair. PR. I could be an ambassador for Waffle House. You really could. Though. And create some, 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 like, a menu. Like, this is the thing, too, at Waffle House. Please take note to this. Reach out to me. You see how all these motherfuckers be doing like the McDonald's? Yeah. The Popeyes. Like all these these uh, menu items. Yeah. Get you a canned waffle type? Waffle House. Holla at me, a bro. A cam cake coming soon, bro. You know what I mean? Thanks. Like, how, like it, it just makes sense. I'm from Atlanta, bro. Waffle House is like, I want them to see how many Waffle Houses is in the... In, in Atlanta. Yeah. And Atlanta ain't nowhere near, you know what I'm saying, how big Texas is, or right. Houston ain't, or Atlanta ain't as big as Houston. But shit, every damn interstate got a Waffle House. That I mean, you're going to see them bold see checkered out. letters like Scrabble with <laughs> Waffle House. That's true. Tell but it was, definitely, it was definitely love, you know, that they, that they reached out. But real quick, just about Mexican OT, like, the conversation went from, and we yeah. got more of him too, but the conversation went from A to Z. Like, mm -hmm. but what was that interview like, bro? Because he, he was just like, you ask him one question, and he got a whole story and then go yeah. back to it. Man, honestly, talking to Mexican OT, it was, it was almost like being back in, in college. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Kicking the shit. And like, you ever been like, you know, yeah, it's facts. just one of them you just. Ever thought about just one of those bong sessions where, and I ain't never smoked weed a day in my life. It was definitely a bong session. Like, it felt like one, like. Bro, like it was like a weed session where like everybody was just talking shit and just like, yo. And like I said, I never smoked weed a day in my life. I just love the aroma of yeah. marijuana. You know, is that weird to kind of say? Uh, but needless to say, like he was talking and then it was like I had some questions to ask. So I was like, man, fuck them questions. Like, shit, what you want to talk about? Like, you know what I mean? And it was just, it flowed so well, you know what I mean? And, you know, he was one of those guys that his attention was so small. Like, yeah, he was just, and, uh -huh. okay, but what about this? You know what I mean? It's like he had his yeah. list of questions that, yeah, yeah. bro, I'm about to run them down. Yeah. And every yeah. time at home, if you ever see Cam take those note cards and put them like this, the show just went rogue, bro. Yeah, like, fuck yeah. it. I had to scramble. I had to scramble. Like, for sure, for sure. But that's just, that tells me, like, I'm in, I'm in that groove. Yeah, you yeah, know, as, as yeah. Brandon Marshall would say, you in that pocket. You in that pocket, bro. You in that pocket, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but for sure, like, I, I really enjoyed that one because it just felt like I was just talking to somebody, you know what I'm saying, uh, from around the way. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was and, cool. uh, you know, it was connected. Yeah, man. I feel like y'all talking, bro. Nice no, at the phone. <laughs>
It's the boat. He's up now. He's up. He's up. You know that. My boy is talking about I got my pop twos on. It's all right though, you know what I mean? Everybody in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? I'm unemployed right now, so I can't. You got to do it. It's just no Saturday morning. No Saturday. Take an album on, you know what I'm saying? Let me get you through. But I'm fresh as a mud. Damn, I ain't know I look like this. Shit! What shot it told me? I fuck, I swear. That's the only thing that happened. You know what I mean? And next up, we have a powerful quote. This wasn't from season three, but we never really like blew it up on our end like we like we could have. But it's from Ti. He had a dope quote, and we just wanted to throw this in. I also want to read to you a text that I received. It's one of my 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 good partners who I went to elementary school with. No way. He just happened to be a legendary Grammy Award winning songwriter, composer, producer, singer, whatever. Remember and never forget. The space isn't the space where we come from. You are so blessed that when people around you stop long enough to see what you have and notice they don't have it, they become jealous. Rarely, but sometimes the world does us a favor. Maybe you bigger than you are trying to be, in my eyes at least. And this is the part that got me. Trees don't hang around with the grass, even though they all started from the same place. I would have cracked my damn phone. <laughs> I would have dropped that. That bit was hot. Hey, man, that was prolific. Yes, sir. That was prolific. <laughs> man, and then we had a tweet, man. Side note, the tree still have a place. It's, the tree still have a space in the place it started with the grass. Don't become unrooted because your growth is from the connection of the two. Yeah, that's heavy right yeah. there. That's some that's some uh, Aristotle, exactly. great Don't philosopher really? type shit. How was it? Because you got some people, you have a wide array of guests that yeah. come and sit down. But T.I. was, it was a grown man conversation. Yeah, Talk sure. about that. Like, yeah, the type of person that I, I, I respect, mm -hmm. you know, I respect all the guests, but yeah. like it's, it hit a little different from a person that you looked up to, you know what I'm saying, um, growing up in Atlanta and seeing how he has shifted his career yeah. from... Rapper, actor, business, you know, um, person, and and it's just so many different things. Family man, you yeah. know what I mean. And and I think, oftentimes, as as a person who is a public figure, you're demonized for being human. Mm -hmm. And 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 Ti is is a perfect example of that. You know, yeah. with the situations that he's that he's kind of dealt with. Uh, I just got to tip my hat off to him, you know, from so many wide array of things. So you know, the fact that we were able to get him on, it was just like, yo, like, <laughs> it, it's a little, yeah. it's a little different because it's not fanning. It's just a sign of respect. Yeah. And I think I, I come from the fold of like, bro, I don't hold back my emotions. I'm going to tell the motherfucker like how, how I really feel, good or bad. And, and T.I. is one of those people um, that uh, I, 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 whole in high regard and really want to be like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I, um, while he was talking, you know, he's extremely poetic in his words. Yeah. And as he was kind of going through it, I was saying to myself, it was like, yeah, like this is my type of conversation, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just to, to, to feel impacted by the words that he was saying, not just those, but just the whole interview. Um, and yeah, you just you just have to marvel over a guy that is able to, um, you know, use his words that powerfully. Like a wizard of the words like T.I. is, like when you was getting ready for this interview, did you like look through your glass or your phone? Like, man, I'm gonna hit him. I'm gonna hit him with this word mm -hmm. tomorrow. Boy, I'm gonna fuck him up. Nah, I don't. I don't really prepare. Like I, yeah. a lot of a lot of the interview style that I have is, I want raw emotions. Yeah. You know, because off camera for every single one of my guests, I always challenge them to to the degree where I hate. Like, <clears throat> just for the record, Funky Friday is no longer a podcast. Correct. Let's let's stop that. It's a show. It's a show premium show at that. Wow. That was always the vision for this. And as we go forward, it still is going to move upwards mm -hmm. because there's not a show that's like, like this, this yeah. that's independently funded. 
usually you have networks that's backing it and, and then to, I never wanted that. So I'm a proven product or, or, or a person that you can say like he's been able to do it. Uh, but when I talk to the guests, I always challenge them to let's have a candid conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, fuck these cameras. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just let's just go about it. And however the interview goes, the interview goes. And I think within these last couple of episodes that we did, um, we started figuring out like an hour just ain't enough. You know what I'm saying? 45 minutes just ain't enough. And sometimes we get to the game, sometimes we don't. But it's still, you know, impactful content that people can leave the the show with with seeing and, and feeling a certain type of way. You know what I'm saying? What's up, what's up? What's going on? I got, I got, yes, sir. What's going on, man? No. I ain't put this shit on a little You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. 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 What's up with you? Yeah, yeah man. It's a big one right here, man. You had the boy B. Marshall on the show. Yeah. The constituent, Brandon Marshall. Hall of Fame question. Let's see what we're talking about. Let me ask you a question. Are you a Hall of Famer? Uh, I don't give a fuck. Cam Newton answered the question. I don't give, like. Or Booby, what is it? Booby, what you say your alter ego is? Booby? Buggy. Buggy. All right, bro, now answer the question. Are you a Hall of Famer? Hell yeah. Okay, thank you. This is Funky Friday. <laughs> All right, go ahead and elaborate. I'll say it like this. Say it. I think it was Kanye who said it. When I first came into the league, it was only one of me. Now when I look around the league, I see so many me's. Oof. Is that the end of the show? <laughs> oh my god. Man, elaborate on that more, bro. You 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 a Hall of Famer, you still feel the same way. <laughs> bro, that ain't why I played the game. You know what I'm saying? Like Impact was the reason why I played the game. My impact was felt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's like, I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. And like now I'm in the, I'm in the wave of my life where, bro, I'm, so, I'm, I want people to know that I'm happy, bro. I'm so happy. And it's just such an easy target for somebody to say, oh, Cam Bitter. Like, yeah. <sighs> so lame. But I, I just, when I look at, look back at my time with playing, you know, football, it was such a joyous, you know, kind of time for me because it, uh, I was free at that. Yeah. And now I have shifted the gear to now creating content. Like now it's joyful for me. And yeah, so whether it comes or not, I think all, all I ever wanted to do is be able to say, I left everything out there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like, I, 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 I did that. Like, my kids know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And me playing the game, I see so many things that I did were brought to the game. Now it's being perfected in other people's ways as On well. On and so, off the field. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But you're still in shape now. You, I see you still go to the gym. Come on now. You're still ready if you get the call, you're Come ready on. to ball now. Yeah, but I, I, I think right now people get so caught up into that rather than, are you happy? Yeah. And I'm extremely happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I don't care what the Falcons or the Panthers or the Patriots or the Browns or the this team or that. I don't give a damn about that shit because guess what? They don't give a damn about me. That's true. So I gotta go. I gotta. I gotta keep evolving, man. And they only talk shit to somebody that w- is relevant and impactful. Like if you was a Joe Smo and talking shit, they wouldn't bring you up. Cam, this Cam. They only can say that because the validity of the name and the brand. Yeah, yeah it's so easy. I don't think. I don't think the sports world is used to people, you know, being honest. Yeah. Especially not even in football, it's a mass sport. Like, bro, like, listen to me. Like, if if athletes were able to just fuck the sponsorships, fuck the team, fuck your teammates, yeah. fuck all that shit, and just say, like, how you really feel? Yeah. Like, motherfucker, I'm mad as fuck right now. Like, what the fuck you mean he missed a shot? Or I missed a shot. 
Like, shit, I've been working my ass off all goddamn week, and then to come out and be get booed? Yeah. What the fuck do you think I'm doing? Yeah. Like, when, when, when people have that type of tone, that's real emotions. Yeah. But that's almost shunned nowadays because you have to worry about the sponsorships. You have to worry about the uh, advertising money. You have to worry about the organization. You have to worry about your coach. Yeah. But those, those reasons why you should care is also the reason why you shouldn't care. Yeah. Because I was, was quickly reminded that with one mistake, that advertisement deal that you worried about, they gonna get rid of your ass yeah. off, over something that was completely like- Misconstrued. Misconstrued or taken out of context. Yeah, that's true. So me sitting now, I'm like, bro, I don't give a fuck about the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Why would I give a fuck about that? If the time comes, of course, that's a, that's a very prestigious award that yeah. anybody would want. So of yes. Of course you care. Of you course I care, it. but I, I've did Everything that I possibly could do to to rest my case, yeah, it still come down to people. That is true. And where I'm at now, I said it before. I want people to live in their truth. Mm -hmm. Speak on how you really feel. Yeah. Don't sit up here and bite your tongue because you got a Gatorade deal or a Nike deal or Puma deal or Under Armour deal or yeah. a Body Armour deal or pot like, bro. And and and. That's just where I'm at in, in the state of media. It's like, bro, I love, I love to be able to just sit back and just voice my opinion about certain things. And it's easy for a person to kind of pick and say, oh, you know what, well, Cam, you wasn't all that hot to. But it's like, bro, you're talking about a person and their athletic prowess. Yeah. This is me and media. That's Correct. two different people. people yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when other people who doesn't have the none of none of the facts, none of the stats, none of the career, none of the backing yeah. to validate what they're saying. Yeah. You don't have nothing to say, but you're an idiot. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like one of the things too that I, I just thought was just so crazy um, was Mel Kuyper, mm -hmm. a, a football analyst guru Correct. that gives rankings about this. Projections of who? Projections yeah. of who going first and this is why I want to do this and this. He said, not me, he said, if Jimmy Clausen is not a success in Carolina, he will quit his job. Was, I'm going to ask you, was Jimmy Clausen successful in Carolina? From Charlotte, Jimmy Clausen was not successful Okay, but that's not, that's not to resurface. Yeah, the Jimmy Clausen. The Jimmy Clausen's success. Mm -hmm. It's Mel Kuyper, because he can make a bold statement like that. And walk off. And walk off yeah. like he never said it, or nobody is holding him accountable. That's true. So now when I get into media and I sit up here and say, hey, Mr. Florio, hey, Stephen A., hey, Mel, hey, all these people who've been just throwing these grenades and hiding, hiding their hand just to start ruckus, it's like, no. You got somebody in this motherfucker now that really know what the fuck you talk yeah. about. And I can yeah. speak on it. So don't don't attack my professional football career. Attack my professional media career. That's true. Because I'll never slander a person. I never wanted to slander a person because of something over human beliefs. It's backed by facts that I can point to and say, this is the reason why I feel this way. This is the reason why I feel that way. These motherfuckers just like, oh, I don't like it. Look at the way he dressed. Yeah. Shit here. He's an arrogant bastard. Don't even know the man. Don't even know me. Yeah. And then if I were to see him in person, it's like, oh my God, Ken, what's up, man? I ain't know you was that big, bro. Yeah. 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 But it is what it is. Yeah, that's true. Because I'm a stand up guy. Like, I, I, I really, you cannot point to a person, a teammate, a coach who, who knew me to find any bullshit in, in, in how I care about yeah. That's how my father raised me. So now being thrusted into media where everything is kind of out there in the open, shit, I'm, I'm thriving, cause shit. Like shit was like, two. <laughs> the Debo situation. Let's, let's speak on that, bro. Did you, did you, <laughs> did you text Debo, bro? Like, text, did, he, did you call him, bro? Bro, hell no. But the number over that he dropped was a 704 number that you. I've never had a 704 number. Yeah. 
I've never had a Charlotte number, 704, 980. Like, shout out to everybody in the Queen City, you dig what I'm saying? But I never had one of those numbers. Yeah. So when he dropped the receipt, I'm like, that ain't me. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Boy, you can't. Like this guy. <laughs> like, the Bro, this shit was so believable that when he said it, and like Kay Adams, like she kind of yeah, she, she like instigated it, it a yeah. little bit. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Like, ha ha ha. Like, yeah. right. okay, cool. Boom. But then when he said, bro, stop calling my phone, bro. It was like, said, bro, I'm not your side, bitch. Like, <laughs> he really played fuck? like a side. Like a, like yeah, a dude side, that was peace. like thirsty. Right. So then, I, I, bro, I hit motherfuckers like, Peggy, you reached out to this motherfucker? Bro, Brendan, did you reach out to them? Like, <laughs> not, everybody was like, no. I thought you did. I I'm like, did, shit, yeah. I didn't either. Like, bro, I went back to Twitter. I went back to Instagram. I'm like, bro. But he, but he, but he tweeted it, and I guess he realized that that wasn't your number and mm -hmm. deleted the tweet. And it's so crazy now. I'm like, damn, people really downloading the app. I post my way app. Yeah. And like, Getting people like, bro, it's a lot of imposters out here, bro. But I would, I would have had to say, I would have had to say to that point too, like everybody who knows. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got people behind the scenes, correct? Right now, right now. And I'm gonna ask, Peggy. Yeah. Do I type the way people see me type? Yes, like VJ. Yes. Like. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> Christian. Like really? my first email with you was that way in email. I'm like, bro, are you serious? Like you emailing like that? Like, yes. You never turn it off. Like so, when I seen somebody start typing regular, yeah, I was like, bro, call it corny or whatever. To the to the people, like, bro, this is me. I am this way in real life. Facts. So sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can like all oh, that look. Coming and then tweeting and shit like that. That shit don't man, I believe I believe Debo. I'm like, motherfucker, that ain't me. Yeah. Like, why would you why would you think that? And I was I was gonna say this. I said, look, bro, Debo, if you wanna if you wanna drop some receipts, ask Christian McCaffrey, your teammate now, what my number will, uh is or was. He probably hit him and was like, bro, that Dang. ain't that ain't empty, though. Come on, both that. You know what I'm saying? And people Delete. want. So to my point, living in this truth of, of reality, it's like people want to be like, I told you Cam was flaw. Yeah. Like, you're not going to get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a person who's lived by morals of like, bro, I do right by people. Yeah. And when he said that, it was just kind of throwing off like, what? That ain't, that ain't me, motherfucker. Then still, people are still like, why is he dressing like that? Motherfucker, get, what the fuck did I say? Because yeah, exactly. if, I, if I start going off of, of what people say from the professional media people to just the regular degulars who are commenting from a, a, a blocked or- A fence to all uh, these uh, fake accounts. Like fake ass accounts or a fucking, you know, this shit weird. If I go into your personal life, I probably find that you got a lawsuit out right now. You probably had a failed marriage that we can talk about. We, we could talk about, you know, your children hate you. We could talk about shit. You got fired for inappropriate or conduct detriment. Like if I were to really do my research on these people, personal life or personal careers. You're going to find some dirt. The skeletons. I'm going to find some dirt. Yeah. But me not, I don't want to play that game. Facts. But people do it to athletes or people of influence. All, All the, the time. time. And to what? To to realize like, oh shit, like, damn. Because I don't, too. people don't apologize. They didn't they apologize. Don't. They don't, they're not going to say that, damn, I was wrong about Cam. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Or they'll scream all the bullshit yeah. and whisper the apology. I love to have Devo on 4th and 1 though. Oh, for sure. When he get the right number. Hell yeah. Get him the right number, man. Get him Somebody get Devo the right number. Real shit. Will the real Cam Newton please stand up? Will the real Cam Newton please text Devo? But I still fuck with Devo yeah, though. You know what I'm right, saying? Yeah. Like, I didn't know he was from Spartanburg. Mm, me neither. You know what I'm saying? I think I think he's from Spartanburg. You know, but from for, from Carolina. So yeah. it's like, bro, how could I how could I hate him? Yeah, facts. You feel what I'm saying? Like it's all like I just don't say one love. Just bro, I'm a lover, dog. Yeah. Like I, I I fuck with people. Like I genuinely want to change that narrative. I ain't the dude to hate. Yeah. So when somebody say Cam bitter, Cam mad that he just like, man, shut the fuck up. Put like, people I, in the back. Fuck man, shut the fuck up, bro. 
Like, I literally am speaking my mind in ways that you can't. Yeah. And I've always stood on that premise to, like, bro, I relate to more people being the human side of me. I never proclaim to be perfect. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I want people to see flaws into me, but that's my perfection. It's like, bro, I'm living in my truth. I never said that I was this. I never said I was that. But, like... Where anything that I do, I do it the same way. And that's yeah. authentic to me. There's people that's on TV that's not being authentic to them yeah. because somebody is telling them what to do and it's say same, and yeah. how to present it. Like, no, don't say that. And if you say that, you're gonna have to make a publicly public apology, like, hey, I said some things or slant. Like, nah, bro. Yeah. Mm -mm. Cause my words don't come out of hatred. My words don't come out of, you know, things that 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 will hurt people, you know. But they say the truth does hurt. And it will set you free. <laughs> right. Man, well, since you're talking about being authentic, this next guest that we had in this next moment was a real authentic moment from an authentic person, Miss mm -hmm. Krishan Rock. Man, let's yeah. check it out. So you're saying y'all never were together. No. But how could you say you wasn't together with but you loved him. Because we spent a lot of time together. I don't mean we was together. Mm -hmm. His dick was everywhere. It's like a deeper version of them that I see. Explain me. that. How did you fall in love with Jonathan? That's easy. He was nice. He was funny. He was cool. He was my homie for at first. Who said I love you first? Probably me. It's given like y'all married, got this happy family, far as fine. I was married with this nigga. But you got happy. the nigga shit on your throat. Cause this is the nigga that put me on. I ran up a bag with and we was friends. And it just got toxic, but we wanted to control each other. <laughs> <laughs> that was a vibe. Is this What's the uh, Joker and uh, Harley Quinn? Th that's y'all. <laughs> and then y'all theme song is Siri. Play Rihanna. Hopeless place. We found love in a hopeless place. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Damn. that was a wild interview. It was, but it was so. I think she needed that. Too. Yeah, go in, go into that because that was like a, for lack of a better term, it was like you was. Uh, not a counselor, a therapist, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was a highly anticipated episode. Because it's, 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 it's different things in that leading up to the episode. Yeah. Because number one, we got to talk about what happened with the DMs, bro. Like, everybody want to know. Like, people saying you slid on her. Yeah. Like, what, like elaborate on that, First bro. First off, I, I reach out to everybody the same in the DMs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, however people took it, 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 it was what it was. But it always was love yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no malice where I was trying to get with her. Yeah. And she knew that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What I was tripping off of is like, yo, like, why the fuck are you screenshotting everything, everything and then putting it on the internet for people to see? Like, damn, like, I ain't know that shit. So now I'm seeing what I'm, what I'm dealing with. I'm like, hold on. I don't even think I can DM this motherfucker no more because shit, I don't want people to kind of think, this I don't thing. want my chick to look at that shit and be like, what the fuck is you going? But you know what's crazy though too? It blew up the episode though. It definitely did, but I seen Krishan and her crew in LAX, you okay. know, uh, with Jazz. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So we was coming back on a red eye and I think she was leaving to go to a performance too. And then boom, there was instant energy like mm -hmm. right there. She was like, oh my God. And she was just talking to Jazz for like so long. I was like, we're just standing there like. I'm just standing on the side. I mean, like. She was like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And right there, I just saw this, this pure human. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That I'm like. The person that you you portray, that ain't that ain't you. No. Like they was having this moment, woman empowerment, where it's like, girl, you keep going, girl, like this, that, and the third, and girl, I just want to see you win. And she got you, power too. You know, jazz was speaking life over her. She was speaking life over jazz, and just like, man, I was like, man, stop all that goofy shit, yeah. bro. Like you don't gotta do that. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I and I hated that. You get this rap because anytime you have influence, 
you owe a due diligence or a service to the people who follow you to lead them in, in a positive way. I think it was Coach Malzahn who really instilled this into me. Uh, my coach, officer coordinator uh, at Auburn while I was there, he said, you want to use your influence in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And that's all I try to do. So me reaching out to Krishan was just me trying to use my influence in a positive way. And I seen that beautiful soul, like she was just so yeah. like, girl, here, here go my number. Blah, blah, blah. And then months later, when, when she was back in the media for the Tamar Braxton situation, oh, yeah. uh, and then she had did the Jason Lee interview. Uh, I'm like, bro, I, everybody's getting a version of her that I don't care to tap into. I want to know about her. Her. Facts. And when she when she felt that energy, like it's still the same thing. She, it was like, yo, I never had nobody talk to me like that. Yeah, it got real, like the crying to the yeah. happiness. It was so many emotions, bro. I'm sitting there filming, I'm like, damn, I wanna cry. Yeah. I'm happy. Uh, she, she might like somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it but, was... but still too, there was there was obvious identity, you know, kind of things that we were able to kind of bring up. Yeah. She's, she's a traumatic person that's just keep, that keeps pushing. Yeah, keeps she's pushing. your dog. Now. She, she never through. really, you know, gave the energy to that issue in the proper way yeah. from having, you know, issues with her family, with her mom, uh, her father, having multiple siblings, and, you know, people are just taken from her, taken from yeah. her. Like, I'm using your, you know, who you are, Krishan Rock, and I'm just going on stage with you. And, and there's just so, they're leechers. Yeah. And even then, like, when I go back to that interview behind the scenes, it was like, so many people here. She, she had a lot of people with her, bro. How many people you think? <laughs> she started off with her and her baby. And like two other people, OG was cool. Mm -hmm. OG, he came through, and another chick. Then by the time we finished this episode, bro, it had to be twenty something people in this mm -hmm. mother. Usually, how many people does a guest usually come with? Like a plus one, or two or three at yeah. the max. Then we turned that joint into like, like bro, man, it, was like, a, it was a lot of people. It was a lot of people, bro. But even then, I was just trying to find out who the fuck is who. Who is who? And who like, are all these people? like, explain y'all. Say, like, who's the new friend? Who's the old friend? Who really knows her? Mm -hmm. You know, in a way where it's like, because all this, these can't be your partners and homeboys and homegirls. It's too many day ones. It's yeah. too many. Yeah. And I like that was one of the things that was alarming to me first. So I was like, okay, I, I see what's what's happening here. And then we have we had this moment where, you know, we were talking and I was I was back in the office or in the closet, right? Where, you know, I kind of collect my thoughts before coming coming back on set. And I just hear the door open. Mm -hmm. And Usually it's a it's a member of Iconic Saga, Correct. you know what I'm saying? Because most people don't necessarily know that that place even yeah. exists. And she comes back there before the interview. And she just walks around. And I'm going over like my questions and I'm like. <laughs> Just as, as awkward as it is right now, like, I'm like, yo, you all right? And she was like, yeah. And she just kept looking around. I'm like, you straight? She was like, yeah. And she said something to me that, that I made my oath to myself that I, I have to do right by her. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I was like, yo, Krishan, like, I don't want you to drink during this interview because mm -hmm. I want real emotion. It's not fabricated or falsified or like intoxicated emotions. Correct, correct. Now, did she drink? Yes, yes. you know. But my wish was I, I, I didn't want her to drink mm -hmm. uh, because I, I, I had to do my research with everybody. But Krishan was a different type of breed because she was so hot. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, right then and there. So I had to go back and look at the Jason Lee interview. And it was just so like you know, gossipy. Yeah. But that's that's he does a great job with with that. Um and he produces great content with all his guests. So I had to look at it for for a time to see how can I get more insight to the actual person. And while she was back there, I just felt like, yo, you good? She was like, yeah. And I and I mentioned to Jason Lee in other interviews yeah. that, you know, she was on. She was like, yeah, I really, I really didn't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? I was just agitated. I said, but why, did, why didn't you say that? You know what I'm saying? She's like, I did. Like, I didn't want to go on there. That's why I was drinking. Mm. And she was masking her emotions with drinking. And that's what I didn't want. And she came in with like this aura of like, um, like she, uncomfortable. But yeah. by the time y'all had y'all conversation, it just like this yeah. wall just dropped. And I'm mm. like, is this the same girl that yeah. walked in? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm she like, came in, she came in with her son. <laughs> yeah. Which I thought was was pretty cool. You yeah. know, and I was very reluctant to to smoke and, you know, being having children myself. Well the baby went on set, so was about Yeah. But just that that pure pure kind of interaction that we had prior to coming on set, it was something that somebody was like, oh man, Cam clapped the buzz. And he's like, no, it wasn't that. It was like, I see something deeper than what the camera showed. Yeah. And I wanted that person to come out Correct. and to feel safe to come out. And those things that she's like, she identified uh, on the show was just a, a product of it was a lot of patience. It was a lot of trust. It was a lot of vulnerable moments that she shared with 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 the viewer and myself. That you know, that's what Funky Friday is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and I wanted to do right by her. And after that interaction, we both came on set, and and I and I told her and her team that I will show you, the team, and the world a different side. Of Krishan. And you did now. Yeah. So Yeah. But real quick, because we we met Blueface in LA. Mm -hmm. He worked out with us. Yeah. He actually is a good athlete too as well. Yeah, for sure. Obviously the media say like their relationship messy, this and that. Like even with interviewing that, like how do you kind of stay out of yeah. the weeds of like talking about him but then not upsetting them? Because you yeah. know, like no, see, I I stand on this premise of, of accountability. Yeah. There were things that Krishan should not have done, mm -hmm. right? And there's things that Blueface should not have done. Correct. And that's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's, that that ain't hate. That ain't. That's just. Correct. Hey, bro, I'm standing on. I'm standing on that. Now, this is coming from a person who's not perfect. So mm -hmm. dare I sit up there and try to add my philosophical views of that's not right. Yeah. Y'all ain't got to do all that. That ain't. That's not me. I'm. I'm taking the approach of that's what somebody should be doing in their camp. They'd be like, Nah, bro. Nah, fuck no. Hell no, nah. bro. Let's go, bro. Let's yeah. go. You tripping? Because yeah. that's what that's the kind of people who I hang out with. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't I don't like yes men. Like it, it's like how are you uh, channeling your value to the group, to the team, to make it better? I don't need you to just be in here just for all the the gifts and the motherfucking experiences. Like, motherfucker, how how you upholding your end of the bargain? Right. And that's all I wanted to try to do for her and him. Like, me knowing him, you know, not on a personal level, but it's like, yo, I'm a big fan of anybody who's who's in this industry. And I'm like, bro, there will be a time where I will see him, God willing, and I will offer the invite to to be like, yo, bro, like, come on my platform to speak your speak your piece, but it's gonna be done in a in a civilized manner. Right. It ain't gonna be no, well she said this, yeah. or she said that, or how do you like nah bro, I'm gonna give my insight and they be like, bro, nah, I don't fuck with the domestic violence shit. I don't fuck with, you know, talking down on women like that. I don't fuck with just the toxicity in relationships. That's not love, bro. Like that's in my opinion, and that's still opinionated to to, you, yeah. to whoever hears it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because somebody still would say like, "You ain't got no business, you know, talking on somebody that you don't necessarily." I not, and I respect that too. Right. But I still, I'm not the person that's gonna bite my tongue when I know that they should know better. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah. Hey, the statistics say anytime any female is in a milk other people and they on their phone, that's the best mechanism. That means they ain't having a good time. You know what I'm saying? You got your man Kenny Brooks, man. He got a crazy story for mm -hmm. you. It was kind of unbelievable, but uh, let's, let's see it. I never gave up. I went from getting kidnapped by Indians to selling Jamie Foxx to working in a racist town where they called me the N-word, and I still sold the dude that called, get off my porch. He was like, I'll take some of that juice. I, that was his exact words, I swear to God. He didn't even care about me. He bought the product because it cleaned this oil. He didn't shake my hand or nothing. He said, look, go to my neighbor house. By the time you go knock on my neighbor door, leave my product right there. I'm going to pick the product up and leave your $40 there. That's how I got the sale. I had to knock on this neighbor door. I was like, oh, you want to play like that? I went and knocked on the neighbor door. A little girl was outside. I said, can you tell your mommy there's a at the door? She ran. I was like, mommy, mommy, there's a at the door. Her mama come outside, saw me and slapped her. <laughs> you know I'm I am so sorry. We is not like that. We just moved in this neighborhood. How, how can I help you? Oh, it's just $40. And I thought about it like, dang, I just got her daughter slapped thinking everybody was racist. Yeah, he's a different breed, man. So uh, Marvel Lord said, one of the most sincere, most honest stories I ever heard to date. Um, Raider2071 said, she got slapped for the coach. <laughs> man, tell me about man Kenny Brooks, bro. Yeah, Kenny, he's a he's a, I mean, a swordsman with his ability to to kind of control the tone of conversation. Yeah, like he'll just get to talking, and you'll be like, "Damn, this dude funny," but also he's a like an elite salesman. Yeah, he is. And I just remember that. In a way where like, dude, this dude is fire. Yeah. He can sell anything. He can Bad. sell milk to a cow. Bibles to a pastor. I mean, he can sell fucking fire to a motherfucking the devil. <laughs> Motherfucker, that is 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 just talented. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So even then, like people aren't realizing my vision in, in Funky Friday. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I was always painted as an athlete. Yeah. That never was my vision. Like, I, you seen the rappers, you seen cultural influencers, you seen people with stories, people without stories, and that's what Funky Friday is. Like, so when I say I, I create content for the masses, that's my kind. Like, yeah. people who are able to hear a story like Kenny Brooks and be entertained about it as well as empowered then boom, I did my job. Would you throw it out, shout it out? Would you get OJ to stab it out, Michael Jackson to bleach it out, or would you call Mike Tyson to bite it out? Now, if I talk too much, just bear with me because I got big lips, so I could put a hickey on a brick. But look, watch this right here, because this is why everybody's been loving this stuff. Now, they call me Wild Earth looking for dirt, Jesse James looking for stains. You know you can't put bleach on colors, right? Mm -hmm. This safe on colors. That's why we didn't sell it to Sam Sosa. But look, you just go back and forth like a lead. This takes the rubbing out of scrub and leave more time for kissing, and hugging, and family loving. They said that's like Nicolas Cage. You know why? Gone in 60 seconds. Boy, you sharper than Gillette. High five. If I had your hands, I'd cut mine off. No, I'd do that. I probably could play football. If I had your legs, I'd run away. <laughs> they said, ah. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> Got your boy again coming up next. Now, I told you we was going to have him again. Mm. Got Charleston White, the fight. You think people are standing together 40, 50 years and they hadn't put their hands on each other in no I'm instance? To tell yes you or no? Tell all you I'm asking Every time I ask you a question, you got all this doctrinated I'm information all, all that I'm sitting up here you, trying to homie, tell you, you and then you're people, not listening to me. All I'm asking, and I'm just trying to do, tell you. Do you think you people stay together 30, 30 40 years? Talk me on I'm Funky not, Friday. I'm I invited you over here. I'm trying to tell you. And you only came by the good graces of God. I'm trying to tell you. All the security behind the scenes that you got behind with you. I'm trying to tell you. I ain't got no security. I got I see, the, I see that person over there. I got over there. I see that person, over there. I see the person that off camera the weed, that you said, man, I really and love. And that's the weed, man. I really love Deion Sanders. That's the weed, man. Oh, fuck this and that. I said, I said fuck Cam Newton. And all this and that, man. You said fuck Cam Newton. I said, the nigga don't book me. He ain't paid me. I done did all that. I said, you really want to do. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. I'm willing to go to jail. I'm willing to go to jail for what comes down to my mouth. Look at so the fuck Dion. <laughs> Man, fuck. Man, 4K T anime said, crazy part is they both talking and listening at the same time. 
I ain't think that was possible. I was saying the same shit. Cam is literally me. I'm going to get my point out regardless. Uh, and then the last tweet was, uh, they remind me of drunk uncles during the holidays. Yeah. That is no lie. Bro, like, how did you, like, that was the ultimate yeah. argument. Like, it wasn't even an argument. It was just a debate. But, yeah. bro, like, Charleston White down here, he up there. I just want to say to Charleston, you was the hardest person that I had to film this damn year because you roll it on the ground, you're standing up, you're leaning back. I'm like... Damn, like how did you keep your cool and really get your point across? Um, that's that's the unique ability about people in, in, in the culture. Yeah. Like we toxic and don't even know it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We were created in, in, in toxic situations that build a guard up of being able to compartmentalize a lot of different emotions, a lot of different feelings, a lot of different whatever. And I just look at a clip like that and, was, and I'm saying to myself, I could never do that in a major network. No. You know cut that, please, please yeah, cut yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. What, what's happening here? Like, like, they're not talking about anything, but yeah. it's like, no, motherfucker. The real motherfuckers know what's going what's on. Going on yeah. And that's, that's why I'm so liberated right now. Yeah. It's like, God almighty, I'm what the game been missing. Yeah. You feel me? Along with other people who are able to say like, yo, y'all create content for your kind. I'm going to create content for my kind. Yeah. And there's ways where you got to build the trust, not only with the person that you're talking to, but to the audience that they know that I have to do a service to being honest at all times. Yeah. And he was talking about something that was very triggering to me. Yeah. Domestic violence. Yeah. So I was even trying to prove my point, like, bro, if you slap a motherfucker, if you put your hands on a woman in front of me, bro, I'm going to have a hard time not putting my hands on you. Yeah. Straight up. Straight up. And that's all I was just trying to say. But his point was like, yo, you think people done been together for 30 or 40, 50 I years? Slap or you know what I mean? And it may be true. It might be, but it better not happen in front it of me. It better not happen in front of me. Yeah. Because if I see you slap Sally... Shaquanda, Felicia, S Samantha, and I'm right there. It's gonna, you gonna hear not just a bat. It's gonna be a bat, bat. <laughs> Cause shit, I'm slapping you too. You feel me? It's a lot of slapping going it's on. It's gonna be slap some, some slapping going on. What that shit is? What's the UFC shit? Yeah, the, the, Dana slap, White? the slap. The slap tournament. Bro, I'm going to be slapping slap the going on. Back in the day at them King of Diamonds. Like, <laughs> motherfucker, I'm going to be slapping them bitches. You hear me? Yeah. Right. Real shit. And, and, and then look at the motherfucker like, yeah. Do it. Now, and yeah, what? Slap me and see, see, see how far you get. Yeah, watch out for Charlton. He, he, he ain't a prize fighter. Yeah, he he is some prize fighter. fighter. <laughs> yeah, that was funny as fuck, too. Next one, man. We got Gary Owen. Is he in or out the cookout? What do you bring to the cookout? Me? Yes. Water. <sighs> I'm not I'm not being that dude. You made this? Get yeah, out. Yeah. No. The best thing for a white person to do at a cookout is compliment the food. Mm. Don't bring it. But it got to come off as yeah, genuine, like, oh not just Oh, my God. What did you put in this? Yeah. And enjoy it. Yeah. Bro, he's a trip. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me. And I'm glad you, you that clip was up. I, I want to personally apologize to Gary Owen. Mm -hmm. He was so professional. He was. He was so patient. And I knew he was frustrated because how we were shooting Funky Fridays at times, we would shoot in bulk. Yeah. Right? We'll shoot three in, in, in one day. And, and when, you, when you're at the graces of somebody else's time, like, we supposed to shoot at 10.30, uh, 12.30, 3.30. Mm -hmm. If that 10.30 is late, it's going to push everything oh, back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then, the, but the, what we're all about evolving and, and learning. So from that, we start saying, like, no, we just need to do one to potentially two a day. And that gives everybody their time to to come in as they please. There, there's a real relationship, you know, prior to us going on camera and things like that. But I just, I really want to apologize to Gary and his team because, man, they were sitting back there 
for such a long time and I knew it. And it was kind of, I forgot who we did before him, but I just knew I, I, I needed to wrap it yeah. up he to get to the next one. And I don't, I don't like that feeling. Mm. But he didn't, he didn't bitch, he didn't complain. He didn't even bring it up. You yeah, know he was a good sport though. He was cool. And that is some of the things that, that's how I become better. That's how I started, you know, speaking with the team and saying like, you know what, maybe, you know, three and four in one day is not smart for business because we want everybody to, to love the experience, you know what I'm saying? And I'm honest enough to highlight that. But yeah, Gary was a person that I really enjoyed and I, I could have went more, yeah. uh, spent more time just on camera with him because he was just such an easy person to kind of talk to. And he has stories after stories and just a comedian that yeah, was like, but this motherfucker funny. just funny as shit. Yeah. Oh, whoa, who made this? Like, yeah. it was so funny. And then too, just like, yeah, I just, I, you know, there's times where, you know, I'm an empath, right? Like I'm empathetic to people's emotions, and I, like I feel that energy. And for like, I, I I just knew it. So man, Gary, if you see this, bro, I apologize, um, and, and appreciate your professionalism through it because that's what people don't necessarily see. Yeah. They just see the final product. Yeah. But man, my man, he could have easily just walked off and said, you know what, bro? Like, I'm I, I'm nah, I, I got other things to do, and he did it. And uh, yeah, it was. It was that's a why show. he coming to the cookout, Gary. That's why you For get. Sure. But is that one thing in our culture? You would say if we seen somebody from another culture at the cookout, mm -hmm. like are you peeping him and peeping their style? Or like, let me see what they got on their plate. Or did they cook something? Or how they gonna act? Like, I don't just think it's a. I think from any culture, it happens all the time. Yeah, this ain't a black and white or ethnic thing. This is like the boyfriend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The girlfriend, what's she going to eat? Yeah, that's true. Can she play spades? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Is she going to critique? Is she going to, you know, help clean up? <laughs> oh, my God. Your mama going to look at that. Is she going to bring something, something, too? And what she or he brings, is it suitable for the occasion? You know what I'm saying? She Are they came empty-handed. Don't bring that half of that round And left. Life. Full handed. And, okay. And left with it had the nerve to, to get a to go box. Go plate. Like, look, with two plates oh, no. and took half my pound cake. And the, the, the heifer didn't even bring nothing but cups of plastic plate. and an empty ass stomach. I mean, oh. listen, bro. So yeah, I mean, it ain't just a white person or a black person thing. It's just the the new guy. Yeah. Dude. Or the new girl. The new yeah. the, the new person that's in that realm. Like, yeah. are they comfortable? How do they talk? Yeah. Do they really act like, like this? That, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I thought it was Gary Owens. No, no, my real name has an S on it. So when I joined SAG, I didn't know you can only have one of everyone's. I already had Gary Owens, he was the announcer on Laughing. So they gave me a list of all these names. I said, well, I'll just drop the S. That's easy. I didn't realize black people really like saying Owens. <laughs> I had to like, correct the people going, that is my real name, but I'm not allowed to tell you. But So what's your real name? Owens. What an Gary S. Gary Owens with an S is my real name. But you're Gary Owen. Stage name and everything else, no S. Oh. Yeah. We just I was about to say, I thought to say Charles was not shit. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Got Mexican OT another game. Verses, man. He broke down a verse that was so crazy by Eminem. You'll never understand what Lil Wayne really saying until it's like your brain just digesting it and it's slow. It's like, damn, that motherfucker snapped. Okay. I remember he said, I always wanted to be a G. Something, so, something. He was saying, I always wanted to be a G, so I got out there and got a bag. Mm. And then be a G, B A G. B A G. Got a bag, you know. I always wanted to be a G, so I went and I got a bag. That you know? shit hard. Yeah. Eminem said, it's going to take 40 men to stomp me for me to feel a defeat. You get that? It's gonna take 40 men to stomp me for me to feel a defeat. If you have 40 men, you have 80 feet. A defeat, 80 feet. It's gonna take 40 men to stomp me for me to feel a defeat. 80 feet. You got digested. Like Lil Wayne, I still got the line. Yeah, yeah, right. Right, yeah, that's some shit, bro. And then their delivery was insane. The delivery? Yeah, I think delivery is everything. Once you've mastered delivery, all you gotta figure out is just have some cool shit to say now. Yeah, but Wayne and Eminem are wordsmiths at its finest. Do you yeah, believe sure. that? 
Kendrick. Kendrick. J. Cole. Cole. Jay Z. Yeah, Drake. Drake. Do you count Drake as a wordsmith if he don't write it? A lot of rappers don't write. But a he lot got the delivery. A lot of musicians don't write. You think the Adele's of the world? You Beyonce think the don't Beyonce's write, yeah. of the world? You know, I, I think what some of the things too, uh, which which you look back at the princes who did everything, played multiple instruments, mm. you know, wrote their own, you know, kind of cadence and 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 um, just songs. And then Whitney Houston. Oh yeah. She didn't write. Yeah. Not all of her Not stuff. All of you know what it, I'm yeah. saying? So it's like, how can we hold them to a standard that we don't hold everybody else to? If you had to make one song with like three of the best lyricists, you only can get three to five people. Random in ten seconds. Who you throwing on there? How many, how many, how many features? Five. Five total. Five features? Yeah. Gotta be Whitney Houston, Jay-Z. Uh, shoot, gotta do Prince, mm. J. Cole, and Drake. Golly, that's a that's a hell of a Cause you gotta sing. You gonna that. sing that and then break like, it down yeah. and sing it. Like, Whitney gonna hit just, them them new them notes. Yeah, that's gonna be for Prince, Jay Z, Whitney, Kendrick, J. Cole. Yeah, damn, that's a hit. Yeah. I'm the best, you wanna bet? I see them other suckers, they ain't no fucking threat. Real quick, fast, fast in a hurry. HD vision, this shit ain't fucking blurry. You fucking real scary, but I'm really hard. They say, where you from, bud? I'm from the college part, where you don't wanna end up fucking after dog. See, y'all niggas really scary, so scary if you gon' fall. <laughs> All right, man. Mm -hmm. This is a live show we did, mm -hmm. which was a different spin. You had a you know a wide array of guests on there, but I think you stole the show and you was talking about them two inches of straight venom. Venom, baby. Let's hear it. Venom. I got two inches of straight venom. Okay, no. Nah. Oh no, nah, 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 that's a hold on. Nah. You said nah, hold nah, on. Two inches, nah. like an angry two inch. Two inches. <laughs> Look, even I though. Everybody don't got a hammer. Who has but they two got inches? a wrench. Who got, got two inches? I'm so, I mean, look, no, bro. You're talking about so he was two inches and now he's up to six? Yes. Now that's different. <laughs> Actually, no, nah, I couldn't. That's a, I, I can't do it. Because then if I have a son, I'm not going to do my son like that. What? Like, what? What's your son? I'm got saying to do, if we, Sandra? if Didn't there's you just genetically, say, there's some things no, 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 you no, no, keep no. away from your. No, 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 genetics. I'm saying I don't want my son having an uh, angry inch to work with when he get out in these streets. Angry inch. I'm not gonna do my my son like this. I'm gonna give him a head start. And I know that he only had an inch. Can he feel anything past the two inches at the top? Like, like there's a lot of medical information I need. Can we keep the cap to a minimal, please? <laughs> and so, man, we had some comments, man. He just like me, for real. <laughs> Boogie went, Broadway T, a wrench is crazy. And we had some tweets. Uh, she basically saying she wants her son to run through these hoes. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss G586 says she made the conversation way weirder, weirder than it was, man. Talk about that, but talk about also this is the first live show we did. Yeah. It was a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. After, before, <laughs> in, in the mix. A lot of extracurricular activity. Yeah. A lot of Energy Energies that wasn't clashing. coexisting, you know. Uh, Talk about it, man. I enjoyed that. Okay. I enjoyed that live experience, you know, having, you know, that um, that fan engagement, yeah. you know, that people can kind of chime in in real time. Um, and I think I want to, you know, keep building on that, too. Yeah. Um, so that's that's one. But to the, to the main topic... Mm -hmm. People have to live in their truth. Okay. That's not a muscle that we can work out. It don't matter how many you do or don't do. It's going to be what it's going to be. So if it's two, three, four, one, 
That's what God gave you. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So you saying it ain't the size of the boat, it's the motion of the ocean. It's the motion of the ocean. And everybody just over here acting like they just got a doggone saber-toothed tiger. And they just, oh, got, a little, a and they just got a little kitten. <laughs> and it's all right. But even then, it's like, what do you do? Because this is going to be something that it's just honest. Yeah. By the time... She figures point. out it's just it's that. Too late. It's too late. It's too late, <laughs> it's too late to turn around. It's too late. It's like facts, though. What's your name? It's too late. It's like you oh. gonna talk about me after, but you still let me hit. Oh, no, it, that's it. And by that time, my my my, my boy, you are, <laughs> shit, you got it. You know, what you mean? Fuck it by. And you know what I'm saying? When you really had these conversations with 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 women. It's not, it's not the size that's the prize. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because shoot, let me tell you something. <laughs> Shout out to my partner Jamie. Jamie put me on this. He said, "Man, listen, you eat the pussy for an hour and get a dick all the credit." Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but shit, like you know, it is what it is. It's like yo, it's like that right there is something where. We got to just stop acting yeah. like. It, well, I got to slow. Because even if you were to ask the counterpart, yeah, if I had the biggest one in the world, they wouldn't like it that. wouldn't be enjoyable. Yeah. So that is something where you're like, yo, is length everything? Yeah. No, it's not. You know, because it's, it's the aura. It's, you know, it's a 15 to 30 minute session yeah. that, still isn't the glue of the relationship. the relationship. You know what I'm saying? You got to talk to the person. You got to be around the person. You got to, you know, all this and that. And it's just not the sex. And you can have a hammer, but if you don't know how to hit the nail the right way. <laughs> God damn. Hey. That's it right there. Hey. You know what I'm hey. saying? Hey. You got to hit that nail the you right know, way. You got to hit it. I mean, right on his head. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? There's different ways to skin a cat. Come on now. Shit. Baby, you skin it. <laughs> it's gonna get skunked. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Come Ooh. on, man. man. We got Tammy Roman, man, on the Popeyes. Yeah. Let's see what Tammy talking about. She was a trip. Let me ask you something. Yes, Lord. You and Popeyes Chicken, and Shaniqua is behind the counter. What's up, Nika? You, Cam, are going to look all around Shaniqua because she's not giving you the presentation that you want. The fat. The little ways, it's like how you outlined all of that. She'd have to have all of that to get your attention. Stumped again! She said, Nah, see, this is. Hold on, uh, uh, Quicks3 said, Getting attention and keeping a man's um, is two different two things. Two different things. You're either fun for the night or fun for life. <laughs> but who said that? Quicks, uh, hey, that's, X3. bro. That's, that's the thing. Because, okay. like, if I'm being honest, which I got to do, I got to keep, it, keep funky. it funky. You see what I'm saying? I'll fuck with you. Mm -hmm. I'll fuck you, but I won't fuck with you. Yeah, that's too. Women got to understand that I fuck with you, right. but I don't fuck with like, you. Like, I will fuck you. Yeah, but right. I don't fuck with you. I don't fuck with you. Yeah, fuck it. with you is like, bro, <laughs> this, this, you, this you call, thing. I answer. Yeah. You know, I, I give you insight or I give you things that you necessarily. It's accountability there. Yeah, but if I'm just fucking you, it's just like. That's the hard truth that most people, guys don't Guys don't even it. get into. I understand it either. You know what I'm saying? But this is going to that point that Tammy made. And, and I loved her uh, segment, by the way. How many times in society have we seen notable men, mm -hmm. wealthy men, okay. date down? A lot. Now, how many times have we seen notable women in thrusted into this entertainment space, sports space, or mm -hmm. public figure, and they date down. Yeah, no, dude, like even like the Simone and her Simone Biles and her husband. That's a hot topic now, but that, she ain't dated down. Yeah, she ain't dated down, but no, she's, she's more money. known though. Huh? She's more known. Yeah, but that don't mean he's you're still talking about financial, make, yeah. financially dating yeah. down. Yeah. You see that more often with men. Men. So yeah, so when she was giving the example of me going into Popeyes, dudes do that every single day. Yeah. 
And when you speak on that, it'd be like, oh, no, you know, no, it's it's the truth. Yeah. Like I could date a girl who works at Popeyes. You can pop the Popeyes chicken. You, you see what I'm saying? And then change her life. I don't really see a a, a, a woman going into a Popeyes where, and I'm, I don't want to say no say, names. Say yeah. You know. But she like, I want you at the character. Nah, he gonna be cute, but <laughs> girl, he work at Popeyes. Yeah. Girl, you won't believe this. I seen a fine ass motherfucker at Popeyes. Don't sleep. Some of them Popeyes might slip in the middle of the night. Like real talk, but <laughs> even she knows. She ain't gonna take him out in public. Either. No, hell no. Nah. Yeah. So that's a perfect, that's what I was pretty much meaning. Like, yo, like there's often times that we've seen examples in media or in, in life that we live now. A a high valued man. Oh, okay. Rest of peace to you know, Mr. Samuel, yeah. right? And they date down mm -hmm. because women's greatest or one of the things some men look for is beauty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, we scan, we, we, with our, our, our eyes, our eyes. Yeah. Like it's like Physical. what we see. That's not everything, everything. that a man nah, looks at. But that's how you, you that's what's gonna get me to walk over to you. Correct. It's you know not. It's like, yo, she easy on the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind what she do. I don't need a girl to pay the bills. I don't yeah. need a girl to do this. I just need, you know, for that specific situation. Yeah. Now there's person. women that's that's getting to the. All the breadwinners, yo. They're breadwinners. They're they're, they're the doing loaf. some very impactful things financially that a man could never do. Correct. So shout out to those queens that's out there. Yeah. But those queens that's out there, they not gonna take no dude from that's up under what they are used to making on a yearly basis. And I think that depends on their confidence or they, they understanding within still, themselves. still, still, okay. a woman wants to be a woman. They, they do want to be taken care of to a certain to degree, yeah. submissive. She wants to feel protected. And Safe. as a man, you can't protect what you can't control to a degree. Mm -hmm. It's like control is, is a very, very, like dangerous word in this. Cause you're not like sit here. No, nah, hell no. Nah. No, nah, I'm not saying that. Exactly. Control is like protect. Yeah. Control is 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 protection emotionally, uh, physically, yeah. um, uh, spiritually. Correct. Correct. Financially. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, nah, baby, you don't need to make that purchase right there. Like, no, let me. I I seen Ti, who you know he was in 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 the media by saying, I don't give a damn. How much she make? She's never paying for anything. Yeah, and I do the same thing with with, with my situation. Yeah. She's never going to drive me around. I'm going to drive her around. I mean, she's never going to open my door. I'm going to open her door. Yeah. She's, you know, she, she take me out on dates all the time. I just end up paying for it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's just that's just how it works. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's just the job of the man. And you saying even with control, if all hell breaks loose. You want your woman to know he in control of the situation. Yeah. He got it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And yeah. and and I can protect you. Correct. You, you see what I'm saying? Correct. And and that is also an accountability for men yeah. to be men, bro. Like that's, that, that's like, true. Let's not let's stop this petty shit. We need to gain the trust of your partner. Yeah. yeah and doing definitely. it just because you got a lot of money, that don't make you a leader. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to have insight on things to be able to know when to shut the fuck up. And allow her to lead too. Yeah, that's also leadership. Knowing when to take the back seat or when to say, you know what, baby, you do go and do your thing. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll follow you. You know, so there I just speak on you know women like that's never been my tone. It's Correct. all about accountability, and we need more men in this day and age to be men to gain trust of our queens. Yeah, and it's more likely for a man to date down in a financial situation rather than a woman. She's yeah. not going to date down. She's going to always date up. And 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 they should, mm -hmm. right? You know, because as a man, I don't see myself ever being like a stay-at-home uh, like person. Like I always got to be doing something. That's that's who my dad was. That's who, who his dad was. His dad, his dad was. You know, we got to be the breadwinner, but if she were to make her own money, that's her money. Her money, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I have to do my service for the people who I protect, my children, my family, my woman. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In in that specific state. And that was just my point. 
Well, you done heard his name a couple of times, but he has so many hits, bro, this year. We gonna... He has some bangers. He has some bangers, bro. Here go another one, man. Charleston White. This is a quick game. You always play a game with the guests. Yeah. And this is how this game went. Sexy Red. Whore. Yeah, stomp down, dirty leg hoe. We're going to have to bleep that. you trying to get me... Uh, well, you asked yeah. me what's coming to mind. So let's play one word <laughs> with Charleston White, right? Yeah. The game is simple. I have a list of names. Describe each person using the first word that comes to mind. Are you ready to play? Yeah. I got 10 names here. Number one, Will Smith. Gay. Jada Pickett Smith. Fucked up. That's two words. Uh, bitch. Funky bitch. Yeah, bitch. That's the only word come to mind in bold letters. Adam 22. Master. Yeah, he a slave master. Bro. So then, bro, the real Michael Phoenix said Charleston White is funnier than Kevin Hart. Bro, like see here, you got to be quiet behind the camera, bro. It was so hard to just like not be like, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't get, like, come on, bro. I don't get, bitch. Like, what's up with your boy? But he was speaking on how I feel. Who am I to judge? Speak? But how did you keep your composure? Like, bro, is this shit real? I wasn't. <laughs> shit, I was just more uh, uh, amazed and wild when he was saying this shit. It was just like, what, what am I going to say? Yeah. No, don't say that. Yeah. That's not my thoughts. That's his thoughts. Yeah. So, shit, how you feel about him? Shit, he voiced his opinion. Thanks, dude. He, he voiced really, how you feel. He raw, bro. Uncut. Like, I feel real shit. So, I'm like, shit, who am I to tell this motherfucker? Like, no, I don't want you to. And he spoke a lot of real, even off the camera before, because I, I think even before we started the interview, you had to be like, all right, come on, come on, we got to say this for, yeah. say this for the camera, Ooh. like. And because on camera, I want real, authentic emotions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because once a person says it one time, it's, it it's, gonna it's not going to be the same. So yeah, it was like uh, the, one of the things that he said off camera that I don't think he really. Um, dwelled in, but he said, a lot of people that's in the industry get stuck on stage. Mm, elaborate. Like, there's a character that you kind of portray, mm -hmm. and you're on stage, and you portray this to the world. I'm a killer. I'm a motherfucker, stone cold, you know, person, you know, but that's not who you really are. Yeah. That's the image that you portray or project to the world, but that doesn't, that doesn't make you that person. Yeah. Like for me, it's like Boogie. You know what I'm saying? I, I knew in my football career, like I had to create this person that I had to go to to be ruthless, to be like focused, to be like very determined about what that is. Mm -hmm. And I gave that energy to that sector of who I was, you know, mm -hmm. compartmentalizing my emotions. And now doing it in, in business is the same thing. Yeah. But when you talk about Cam, when you talk about the, the, the father, that's not me. I'm able to come off stage and, and keep that for what it is. Yeah. And, and we spoke about that in, you know, in the Brandon Marshall uh, interview. But yeah, me as a whole, that was just, you know, that's just my tactics of, of never being stuck on stage. Yeah. Well, Cam, these are some... Uh, our best moments, obviously we had a lot of great interviews mm -hmm. over this season. I mean, even the people at home, we would love to just hear their comments of who they think has some dope interviews. There's a lot of people we can name, but these are some of the ones. But who are some of the people you want to have on season four of Friday? Mm. You know what? I'm, I'm so intentional. Mm -hmm. um, and as we kind of start this new year, um, it, it's important that I tap into what I really want. Having uh, vision boards, having uh, accountability uh, meetings and, and looking back at what we did right, wrong, and how we can you know, move forward and, and make things better. I've always kept this chart with me. Mm -hmm. And like I'm a writer, I've, I've said that numerous times. 
Um, and if people were to see, like, what's that? Mm. But, like, I write in my little book, and these, like, I got a list of about 50 people yeah. that I want. And if the camera can see, like, this was written on November 13th, 2003. It started, right? And at that particular point, I didn't have a million subscribers. So, road to a million subs. And when I was writing it down, these are all people who I admire and would love to have an opportunity to interview. So I'm putting it out into the universe okay. for the people to hear their name. And if they don't, if you don't hear your name, still, it's like now. You still want to. Correct. I've, I've created something with the help of, you know, the team at Iconic Saga to be able to now be validated by people to say like, yo, I want to be on your show now, you know, but when I was in the backseat of the car, nobody really wanted to do it, but that's, that's growth. So as I get into my list, no particular order, Correct. I'll just say it like this, a person or the people who I would love to be on Funky Friday in 2024, uh, and it says follows, Kyrie Irving, Birdman, Master P, Kim Kardashian, Jada Pickett, Lori Harvey, Drewski, Cassinette, Al Heyman, uh, Tina Knowles or Matthew Knowles, uh, Chris Jenner, Tyler Perry, Cardi B, Nick Cannon, Floyd Mayweather, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, Nicki Minaj, Will Smith, Future, Boosie, Travis Kelsey, Chris Stapleton, Zach Bryan, Quavo, Kanye West, Michael Jordan, Cat Williams, 50 Cent, OJ Simpson, Andre 3000, Mr. Beast, Offset, Drake, uh, Travis Scott, Lil Dirt, Lil Baby, Larsa Pippen, uh, Marcus Jordan, uh, Busta Rhymes, NBA Youngboy, Rihanna, ASAP Rocky, Pat McAfee, Rich Paul, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Jay-Z, Adele, T.D. Jakes, Louis Farrakhan, Dion Cole, Cassie, Amber Rose, Mike Tyson, Shikari Richardson, Joe Rogan, Post Malone, uh, Nick uh, Kyrgios. Like the, the tennis player. Okay. Uh, Doja Cat. Uh, Demetrius Flannery, also known as Big Meech. And that's like... And many more to come. Many more. Yeah. Yeah. But that's 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 that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and I've been just jotting down names, jotting down names. And I think it's important that people understand... My vision for a Funky Friday. Yeah. Uh, when I first started Funky Friday, and still, as I grow and, and keep growing, um, I want to be the modern day Arsenio Hall show. Mm -hmm. I want to be the modern day Oprah Winfrey show. I want to be the modern day or the cultural. My next guest needs no introduction with uh, David Letterman. Um, people who I look up to and admired uh, Larry King. You know, these guys are, are able to bring out real emotions. Bra uh, Barbara Walters um, and just so many others that I'm saying to myself, it's like, yeah, they are so crafty with drawing out these emotions from people yeah. and people are able to relate to them. Right, wrong, or indifferent, they're still being able to draw out emotions and that's really all I really want to do and um, as we go into this new year man I think the sky's the limit uh, I'm more excited than I've ever been because I can be able to be a trailblazer for so many different other people especially athletes yeah to be able to live in their truth to speak their mind and and, and keep it funky as we always say keep it funky, um, and with that I think you do more good because people are able to peel back 
raw, vulnerable emotions and are able to kind of see the world how you see it, feel the world how you feel it. And, you know, that's your kind. So when I say that, I, I, I stand on something so emphatic because it's needed. It, it, it's the ability, the ability to relate to the baby bloomers, the millennials and Gen Z. And, you know, to have a product that people look forward to seeing is what it's all about. Cool, man. Well, we in the year 2024, bro. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm going to let you take the reins. And, uh... Motherfucker, you know what we got. So as we end this year and start this new year off the right way, um, happy new year to everybody. Um, and we know how we end things here at Funky Friday. You got anything else you need to say? Man, well, just thank you to all the subscribers, uh, for real. Miss uh, Blackie. Blackie. Millennial. Milio, I'm sorry, Milio. She shy, y'all. She still don't like to talk. You know, she don't really fuck with y'all and with all that rah rah. But she did, you know, lean over and whisper to me. She want to wish everybody a happy new year. Um, and let's let's keep getting good content for the masses. There you go. Uh, you know what time it is. You dig what I'm saying? We're gonna start this camera, then we're gonna go to that camera, then we're gonna finish with that camera. You ready, Pat? I got you, doggy. Here you go. Let get it, let get it, let get it. Let do it, let do it, let do it. Here we go. One finger, one pinky, one thumb. One thumb. Happy New Year all together. One Ooh. love. Ah. Appreciate it, brother. Have a new year.